It's the Mike Francesa Podcast on the Bet Rivers Network. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Mike Francesa Podcast, brought to you as always by the good folks at Bet Rivers. Remember to download the Bet Rivers app for everything you need when it comes to your wagering, for entertainment, etc. And remember, uh, get extra value this football season with the Bet Rivers Squares. Win up to ten thousand dollars in bonus money. By just placing a $10 wager on the same game parlay on any game with the square icon. And who knows, maybe you will win $10,000 in bonus money for as little as $10. That's it. That's all you have to wager. Remember, when you download the app, it's faster. It's, it's a faster experience. It's, you know, they have exclusive promotions that come your way and one app while traveling. So go to the Bet Rivers app, download that. That's where you'll find the podcast as always. All right. Uh, the Football Friday podcast will come your way and be up on Friday by noon as always. Uh, this is a look at what we are uh, going into on Saturday, the second round of the uh, baseball playoffs, the first round. Not a lot of drama as obviously each of the series went in two games. And now we have uh, enticing matchups for the ALDS and the NLDS. You have Texas at Baltimore. The Orioles have been waiting a long time for this. They are a now team. They are very strong. They are going to be strong for years to come, and they are dangerous. The Phillies are playing well. Can they unseat Atlanta, which has got some issues with its pitching? Uh, despite their mighty lineup, despite the years that some of their players have had, and amazing years by Acuna, by Olsen. I mean, just unbelievable seasons. Uh, but the Braves, who deserve to be favored to win it all, when well, my pick to win it all, I went Houston, uh, Atlanta before the season started. No reason to stop that. But I have to tell you, my heart will be with Minnesota I love what I've seen from the Twins. I love the scene back in Minnesota the last couple of days. And they have some good young players and some really good power pitching coming out of the bullpen. They have enough starting pitching to get by. Uh, I like the way uh, they are approaching this. I like what I heard uh, from their manager. And listen, obviously, Correa against his old team, I don't, the Astros are, are gamers. They are experienced. They have been wonderful in the big game. Uh, put a gun to my head, I think they win the series. But I will be rooting and rooting hard for the Twins because they're fun. They really are. They're a fun story. Uh, and an unlikely story, but a fun story. And finally breaking that 18-game uh, losing streak, you know, as... Enormous as it was, 18 straight postings and games lost. Now to have that broken and then they win the next night. You know, you think about all those times the Yankees broke the Twins' heart. I mean, time after time after time. Uh, but it has gone on for a very long time and they turned that around. And then you have Arizona um, and the Dodgers in game number one. And remember, we know who the Dodgers are. We know what they're about. But also... They have some hits and have taken some hits to that pitching staff, which makes the series closer than you may think. Uh, Texas at Baltimore, Philly at Atlanta, Minnesota at Houston, Arizona at the Dodgers to start things off uh, on Saturday, weather permitting in some spots uh, as we move into the second round of what will be a very busy month of October with these teams. You know, clearly... Baltimore, Atlanta, Houston, the Dodgers deserve to be called the best teams in the sport. Everyone has a healthy respect for the Phillies and should. We know what they can do. We know how they have approached that. We know they're ready to do whatever they can to keep moving it down the line, and that's what they will try to do now. And that should be a tremendous series. You know, the, the Phillies got... Terrific pitching from Wheeler and Nola. And it's funny, you watch this and you watch Montgomery and say, hey, I've seen him before. And you watch Wheeler and you know how I felt about Wheeler leaving. You know, Wheeler was and remains one of the nicest kids I'd ever met on a major league club. An unbelievable kid. 
in every way. You know, when I take, this is going back when my boys were, were small. I mean, going back when they were, you know, five and three or six and four, a long time ago now is one's a senior in high school and one's a freshman in college. And his sister, who's a twin, is a freshman in college also, obviously. And time has traveled so quickly. But I remember taking the boys out, taking them over to, you know, to City Field and taking them wherever both are, but especially there, and having Wheeler, you know, he just loved it. He loved kids so much, and he was so nice to the boys. It was unbelievable. Not just once, a couple of times. Took them out in the outfield, shag flies when they were little, you know, took, took them over the side, had a catch, blah, blah, blah. He just was, was a great, great kid, and look what he's done. Uh, look what he's brought to the Phillies. Look what he's done in the postseason. Uh, really impressive. Very, very impressive. And, you know, the Phillies have a lot of, they have a lot of good things going for them. They are extremely dangerous. And I think they're one of the teams that feels that they aren't going to, you know, back down to the mighty Braves. Nor well, should they. That should be a very, very interesting season, series. You know, some teams went through a lot of loss and a lot of crazy things. Tampa obviously did. This postseason probably left a tough taste in the mouths of Tampa. To have it end as quickly as it did, to have the venue and the franchise perform as poorly as it did, in front of the eyes of the nation who couldn't believe, wait a second, you got a playoff team here and this is what you're going to draw. But things are different there. And obviously, they weren't the same team they were early in the season for a variety of reasons. We could say that about a couple of these teams. Some have come on and others have languished. And it will be fascinating to watch as this unfolds starting Saturday. First game up will be, and, you know, they'll back off as far as days right after they get the things established. But uh, starting Saturday, you know, uh, you have, if the weather cooperates, and there is going to be plenty of, Plenty of uh, questionable weather in a bunch of spots on Saturday. So you don't know what exactly you're going to run into, but you had a chance of running into some uh, rather poor weather in some spots. But you're going to have the Rangers and the Orioles at 1. That's going to be on Fox Sports 1. You're going to have the Twins and the Astros at 445. That's on Fox Sports 1. You're going to have the Phillies and the Braves at uh, 6 o'clock on TBS. And then the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers, 9.20. And the very, very gifted, although aging, Kershaw will be on the mound, which will be an interesting, interesting thing to watch right there. We'll see Verlander Saturday. We'll see Kershaw Saturday uh, as the ALDS is open up for strong and interesting. Interesting. I mean, we know who the best teams are. We know what has to happen here, but you got a couple of live teams and a couple of fascinating stories that are that are developing and developing in a in a really a you know a impressive way i mean you had to be you have to be just thrilled and really uh it's easy to jump on that uh, 
jump on the back. It's really easy to jump on a bandwagon with the twins. It really is. You know that? And there's some, you know, you can see what the Phillies have going. But you can also see, you know, just a lot of life. You know that? A lot of life from a couple of different organizations, especially, especially the, uh, the Twins who, hey, we know how tough it's been for them in the postseason. And we know what Houston brings in terms of experience, in terms of clutch, in terms of toughness. You know, they're proven winners in every way. You know, uh, moving over to football, I remember we'll have the Football Friday on there. You know, we'll have it up. We try to have it up by noon on Friday. Week five already in the NFL. A lot going on. Big games abound. Um, Obviously, the Evan Neal thing got a lot of attention. And I can guarantee you, and I was, you know, a couple people said to me, hey, everyone wants to know, your take is on Neil, blah, 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 blah. It's an obvious one, folks. Listen, I could have told you that before the words were bouncing off the walls, that the Giants, from ownership down, and for all, it could have easily been John Mara who did it, who went down and said, what are you, nuts? You can't win this fight. You don't, you don't pick a fight. You don't pick a fight anywhere with the fans. No less pick a fight in New York with the fans. You can't win it. And let's be honest. When you come here and you get Tab to come here, okay, and you get paid to do a job and you don't do it, well, you know what? You got to accept that you're going to get criticized and you're going to get booed. Just like if you do the job, you're going to be a hero in this town. This town rewards performers. It rewards performance. It rewards toughness. It rewards clutch. But if you think that you're going to be some tough guy, and why would a lion concern himself with the opinion of a sheep? Well, first of all, what have you ever done on the field to prove that you are in any way a lion? You have been absolutely abused. And then you're going to attack the fans? Cannot win that. Okay, so what? Are fans fair weather? Yeah, they are. Are they fickle? Absolutely. Absolutely they're fickle. They're going to boo you when you're down. They're going to kick you when you're down. They're going to cheer you when you're up. They're going to jump on the bandwagon. That's what fans do. That's what all fans do. You just learning that? When you don't perform, you're going to get it. When you play like absolute garbage, you've got to understand. You're going to, you're going to hear it. You just, you know what? Understand where it's coming from. Say nothing and try to perform better. Because if you don't, you're going to keep hearing it. And if you pick a fight, they're going to run you right out of the town. It's a fight you can't win. And I'm sure whether it was John Mayer, whether it was the general manager, whether it was the head coach, whether it was a position coach, they all sent the same message. You can't win this fight. All you can do is make things worse. All you can do is lose and lose big. You cannot lash out at them when things are going bad. 
Okay, they didn't miss the tackles. They didn't miss the blocks in your case. They didn't allow the sacks. And when you take people on and make fun of their jobs and denigrate their work because you make more money, you have gone down a very steep slope from which there is very little return. So listen, he got the right advice. He apologized, he said he was wrong, he said he was frustrated. I let my frustrations and my desire to win overcome. Hey, so folks, now you cut him some slack and you back off. You could have buried him if he didn't apologize. He did apologize. He took the advice that he got. Like I said, it could have come from ownership. It could have come from, hey, come from anybody who knows this town. And this town, as much or more than others, this town's rough. It's unforgiving. It's unflinching. It is going to come after you. Just the way it is. And all you did was serve it up on a tee for anyone who wanted to come after you. So anyone, the media wanted to just tee off on you. You made it easy. You made it really easy. Because the hard ones for the media is when they come out against someone who's either strong in a power position or doing well. Because there, you're going to kind of stand alone. It's not going to be in the group. This one, it's like teeing it up. And you knew he had to apologize. If you'd been around the block once in this town, you knew he had to apologize. It wasn't even any issue. I can tell you right now. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, there were five guys in line in front of his locker telling him, are you nuts? Everything that you possibly could have done wrong, you did. You pressed every wrong button on the way down in the elevator. You didn't miss any of them. You belittled what they do for a living. Well, first of all, how do you know what they do for a living? They do a million different things for a living. Yeah, are some of them flipping burgers? Yeah, and some of them own companies. And some of them make 50 times what you make. So what's the difference? It's not about that. But you're the one who made it about that out of sheer frustration. I understand you don't like hearing it. Of course, they will moved on. Said, hey, he said what he said. He was remorseful. He apologized. We move on. That's what he wants to have happen because you know what? All that does is make what's going on with them right now harder. This was a, another bump in the road that they didn't need. And listen, not everybody's going to buy his apology, but you know what? Give the kid a break. He's having enough problems as it is. You don't need a pound of flesh here. You really don't. We know how bad he's been. You know that going in. So he reacted the wrong way. He made a mistake. You move on. That's all. But understand that. You can't, you can't pick a fight with the entire public. It does not work. It's a losing, losing battle. All right, we go from Neil to the news of just a couple of minutes ago that Billy Epler has stepped down as the Mets general manager. 
this shouldn't come as a big surprise. You almost got the idea, and I don't think it was the case, but I think you almost got the idea when Stearns was being introduced the other day that ownership had made Stearns keep Epler as part of his employment, which clearly was not the case because Stearns was brought in to be the entire boss, the entire power. So he was going to have a call on everybody from Buck. If he was going to have a call on Buck, he was going to have a call on Epler. And now you have seen that the other shoe has dropped. What Epler said was, I wanted David to have a clean slate, and that meant me stepping down. Bottom line is, he wanted to wish them the best. There was a thought here that Epler was just staying around because he had a hook to Tani. The bottom line is, they brought Stearns in to run the entire baseball operation. He was beholding to no one. He has the right to clean house. He has the right to bring in everybody that he wants. And now he will hire a general manager. But really, that's fine. All he's hiring is people who are underneath him. He is the guy who's running the organization. He is the guy who is going to make the baseball decisions. He's going to hire a lot of people. He's going to hire people to develop players. He's going to hire people to scout players. He's going to hire people in the front office. He's going to hire managers. He's going to hire everybody along the entire chain of command. And he's the boss and he answers only to the owner. And that's just the way it is. So this shouldn't come as a huge surprise because, let's be honest, Epler had no power anymore anyway. He wasn't in a position of authority. All the moves are going to be made by Stearns. So it didn't make a lot of sense. Epler wants to do it. Stearns wants to do it his way, and you brought him in to do it his way. And you know where it all starts and where it all stops. And that's with him. He answers only to the boss, the owner. And the owner wanted him to run the entire organization soup to nuts. And that included the general manager. Because it did look the other day, and I watched the press conference, it did look almost like, you know, Epler was staying and that was it, and he had to understand that. Well, that wasn't the case. And now he has moved on too. So it turns and everyone will jump in underneath him. Now, as far as counsel, everything I have heard is that counsel does not want to live in New York. If that's the case, if his family doesn't want to be here, his kids don't want to be here. If he has second thoughts or trepidation about being here, move on. Move on to somebody else. You don't want somebody here who doesn't embrace New York, and it does not sound like he wants to embrace New York. New York is not for anybody. Plus, if you're coming from someplace else right now in this country and raising a family, New York is not the most, you know, is not the place that is the most appetizing to everybody. There's a lot going on in our city that isn't pretty right now. There's a lot going on in our state that isn't pretty right now. It's, it's not the greatest place to live anymore. We still love it because we grew up here, because it's what we know and what we love. But if you're coming from someplace else, I can understand why you're not thrilled with it right now. So I think... You're looking elsewhere for a manager. And this, like I said, doesn't surprise me in the least. We all know who's making the calls now, and now it's all about him. Let's see if he can use the vast resources that the owner has and turn that into a winning franchise and a consistent winning franchise. It's going to be very interesting to watch, but this shouldn't come as a big stunner to anybody. 
We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to the Mike Francesa podcast on the Bet Rivers Network.